when you're going through like the embassy, the rescue, what's the procedure before it? Well, the procedure when you arrive on the ground is to do an immediate action plan. And the immediate action plan is, if it all goes wrong now, um, you've got this area of responsibility, you've got this area of responsibility, you've got this one, and we go through the doors with sledgehammers and we try to save as many as we possibly can. So we got on the, we got on the ground about 48 hours after it started. We were next door in the Royal College of General Practitioners, next door to the Iranian Embassy um, at Prince's Gate uh, in Kensington. And um, nobody knew we were there. We sneaked in about one o'clock in the morning, got all our kit over the wall and in the back door, and there we were. We had an immediate action plan. And there, were a ho there was a whole squadron of us. So a whole squadron is about 60 men. And about 45, 46 of us were assault qualified, which means we were going to do the job. And the rest were uh, attached arms, support arms, and the officers in charge. And we were each given a floor. Each group of eight men was given a floor each. And if it goes wrong, you're going to go into that floor. You're going to go into that floor and make the best of it. And then over the next period of time, you, the officers start to develop a deliberate plan. So they start to gather information on the building, who's being held where, what the doors are made of, are there any uh, security pr systems we've got to get through, is there a basement, is there a way through the roof, is there a way through the attic, can we get listening devices in, can we hear what's going on, uh, what are the negotiators doing, they're establishing a rapport with the terrorists, trading people in, trading people out, um, giving food, um, pro making promises. And uh, over the next four days, we then developed a deliberate plan. And Margaret Thatcher said the, there would be no military assault unless they kill somebody. And the plan was that, um, you know, we would wear them down and eventually they would give up and they would be arrested and go home. So we prepared, we practiced, uh, we rehearsed, we had different options. And finally, um, they murdered uh, the Chargé d'Affaires a man called Lavazzani, and threw his body out the door on the Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening. And, uh, or was it a Monday? I fail to remember. And um, we were then given authority to mount an assault, which we had ready and planned. Uh, we left the building silently, and the plan was to sneak up to six entry points, and each eight-man group would take out um, a floor each, and they would plant their charges on their entry points and the officer in charge would give go, go, go. And all those devices would be exploded at the same time. We would enter with speed and surprise. And um, the basic premise was, the basic philosophy was, if you kill the terrorists, you've got more chance of rescuing the hostages. But we were briefed very, very thoroughly on the law. As we were approaching the building, things started to go wrong. One of the guys abseiling down the back of the building to get onto the um, first floor balcony put his foot through a window. And uh, Salim, the terrorist leader, uh, said he'd heard, he was talking to Max Vernon, the hostage negotiator, and said, I've heard a strange noise I'm going to investigate. At that time, the commanding officer knew that we'd been compromised and gave the go, go, go early. So you see the famous footage on the front balcony of John McAleese and Tom McDonald leaping over and sticking the frame charge on and initiating it when he's only a few feet away from it to blow out the windows. And those eight guys go in there and there's the rescue of Sim Harris and the hostages are behind that window, most of them. Whereas on the back door where this guy's put his foot through the window, <clears throat> he's not only put his foot through the window, he's got his glove caught in his abseil harness. So he's stuck above the window and the other guys abseil past him, throw their pyrotechnics through the window. They go off, set the curtains alight, and now he's becoming a barbecue because the curtains are burning and he can't get down. So he's kicking his way out from the windows, trying to, and he's got, and on top of that, he's managed to get his hand jammed against the pressel switch of his radio. So all communications between everybody have been cut off. And all we can hear down the, all we can hear down the radio is him screaming because he's getting burned alive. And I'm looking up at him, and three rounds come through the window above me because the guys have already gone in by now. And I see three bullet holes appear in the window doof, 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 above me. And I'm thinking, well, there's nothing I can do about that. There's nothing I can do about this. Um, it's too late to lay the charges on the back door. 
So Big Bob Curry goes in with an eight-pound sledgehammer, takes out the back doors, and in they go. It's my job to stand on the back door with Ginge and go to any place where there's an emergency. So we're holding the back door. There's screaming, there's noise, there's gas. Above me, Tommy Palmer is um, has come back out the window underneath the guy who's burning because his head's caught fire. So he takes his gas mask off, throws it away, puts the flames out on his own head, and then goes back into the gas and does his job and kills two terrorists without his gas mask on. Meanwhile, above Tom, who's hanging on the uh, rope, the guys are trying to cut him down, but it's a, it's a rope under tension. He's kicking himself out. If they cut the rope when he's kicking outwards, he's going to drop 30 feet onto solid concrete. So they have to cut it. And they, they eventually cut it, and he drops down onto the balcony and goes in and carries on with his job with severely burned legs. I'm on the ground floor. As he drops... The pressel switch comes clear. The radio station's open. Hector, not knowing the commanding officer, not knowing what the hell's going on, uh, suddenly goes, reserves go in. So me and Jins go through the door in the back door into the, into the foyer and Trevor Locke is coming clear at the bottom of the stairs. He's the policeman that's been held hostage. So grab him, throw him out to the next guy on the door. Then the hostages start to come down and we're just throwing them down, mostly females. Boom, 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 boom. And they're scared to death. So we're just keeping them scared and we're passing them out like a rugby ball. Bang, bang, bang. Out they go. There's a chain. Things are organized. You know, there's screaming, there's smoke, there's fire, there's, there's, there's gunfire, but it's organized. And out they go, out they go, out they go. And then up above on the stairway, just above me, somebody shouts, um, I, hiss, I see somebody out the corner of my eye get butt swiped. And somebody shouts, he's a terrorist. And as this guy comes clear at the bottom of the stairs, there's, a, there's one of our troops standing within a few feet of him, very, very close to him, who opens fire. And I open fire as well, and I fire three rounds. And this guy puts 24 rounds in him from about 12 inches. And the guy crumples to the floor, and he's got a grenade in his hand. And um, that grenade uh, doesn't have the pin pulled out. And so, you know, he crumples into a pile at the bottom of the stairs. And then the rest of the hostages are out, 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 and uh, we get them out on the grass outside. And we handcuff everybody with plastic cuffs. And one of the terrorists has managed to um, hide himself in amongst the hostages. And outside, uh, the hostages quickly identify him. And uh, me and a guy called Tony pick him up and carry him away from the others and separate him. And, um, you know, that's pretty much the operation over in seven minutes. And we killed five terrorists, captured one and rescued 19 hostages. One hostage was killed by the terrorists as we made our entry. Um, it, nobody had heard of the SAS before that. Um, we were Fred Carnot's army in darkest Herefordshire, and um, after that, um, we became the myth that still exists today. <laughs>